this because I mean there's a whole bunch of bait. You definitely want to be somewhere where there's bait. I think these are a whole bunch of like little creek chubs as they call them. Um, so hey, there's a fish on that. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hey, hey, that's a good one. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's a good fish, dude. <laughs> Look at that. Larry catches the biggest bass. Welcome, welcome back to another video. This isn't the intro, but we absolutely killed him in this video and we saw a whole bunch of big fish as well. Well, I don't want to spoil anything, but just know we caught a whole bunch of fish in this video. So here we go. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today we are doing something that is, it's been on my bucket list for a minute and I kind of did it a little bit but really wasn't too successful at it and it really wasn't too big of a part of a video today we are going to wade one of my favorite little creeks that I found we need to put the truck in for high not for low for high because don't want to get stuck down here but we're going to go wade a creek that I found in like my little local area I got some cheap waders off of Amazon and I don't have any wading shoes I'm gonna wear my Crocs and we're gonna go down here and try to catch some bass here recently the spotted bass down here have been pretty fat and juicy so I'm not sure how far we're gonna go a little nervous to go down here and do this because one I am by myself I saw another car down here so hopefully they'll stay down here so like if you know one of us needs help I can just be like hey help. yeah we're gonna go wade in this little creek hopefully they're not you know eating up all the fish over here we're gonna see what we can get into today's actually the first day that I'm actually able to get down here and do it a little bit we've had a lot of rain the water's been up a little bit but it should be kind of back down to a normal level so let's get down here and see if we can't get into some good old creek fish and we're going to be doing a little bit of a solo wait a minute then i think we can probably go pretty far because the parts of the creeks that i've fished so far are pretty much just like they have little deep pools in them and i think that should be money for stay tuned we're gonna see what we can get into hopefully we don't get stuck down here because it is quite wet and muddy so stay tuned Also, um, I've given up on the weather app, so I just stopped checking it before I come out because it's never right. But it looks like we might get into a little bit of a thunderstorm. I rigged up a rod at the house. We're gonna walk down here and see what we can see. It is already pretty mucky down here. We might need to go ahead and put on our waders, but we'll see. Whoa, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see what we can get into. I like the water level. I like the water depth. It looks pretty fishy down here, so. We'll see if we can get on a few good old big mouth bass. Also, we'll see how many times we slip and fall because it's bound to happen today. Whoa, see in these crops. Sounds like there's a little bit of thunder in the distance, so we're gonna hurry up. Hopefully we can at least catch like one or two, and then if anything, we'll just come back down here. It's not ideal, but it might be how it has to go. So I am still fairly new to this style of fishing. Seems like a couple things that I've learned from this is you don't have to be up early to do this. So you can get down here at nine, 10 o'clock, and honestly, the fishing might be better the higher the sun get, gets up and the fish can really see a little bit better in the water. Um, I have very, very low expectations for these waders just because they are like a cheap Amazon pair, but should get us by for a couple of trips until we figure out if we really want to pursue this passion or not. I love, it's something about putting on waders. It's just the most fun thing in the world. It looks like we're about to go make some moonshine. That's what it looks. Maybe I can get featured on an episode of Moonshiners. Don't know nothing about it, but it'd probably be pretty cool to be able to participate in that show. I am a little nervous to go down here because uh, that kayak tournament we fished on Lay Lake, the first creek I went into, saw probably four or five snakes in one creek that was only 10 yards deep. <laughs> they were just sitting on rocks. I mean, you could tell they were definitely used to seeing boats and people, but that's very fishermen of us putting our pliers up right here. All right, got that. All we brought with us today are generals and little troopers because that's all that I've been catching fish on out of this creek. So a whole bunch of these. And then we also brought just a small little pack of net hooks that we're gonna throw in here. Hey, that makes life a lot easier. So now I really don't have to worry about taking as much crap with me. All right, the wind's starting to pick up. I'm not sure how much of the sky y'all can see, but the sky's getting a little dark and nasty too. So. We're gonna go ahead and hustle down there and hopefully pick out a couple fish before we get kicked out of here by mother nature. Little hot car little troopers. These have been the money. This is a smaller one. They also have like a little super trooper that crawls are a little bit, the punchers are a little bit bigger on the super trooper, but regular one should get the job for us to get the job done. All right, we're gonna rig it with the darker side out. No reason for that, just trying it out that way. Or actually we have the lighter side out. Or we're probably gonna wade farther this way just because the current's going this way so we can kind of fish with the current. 
and then we'll end up going this way if the weather doesn't kick us out of here but until we get to that point i want to fish a little bit of this just to go ahead and fish it um so when we come back through we can probably hit it again and if there's more fish we can probably catch a couple more out of it look at all these little fish right here there's so many of them All right, let's see if we can, oh, better cast that time. Hey, first one is a stick, let's go. This little creek is so full of life. I hit I don't have a weed guard. I have a couple of hooks with weed guards at the house or I have a few packs of them, but for some reason, I didn't even think about it before I came out here. I just rigged up my, just normal little net heads. So definitely be a nice place to have some, a little weed guard on them. So cool because this creek has so many different species of fish in it. Oh no, please. This water is up fairly high. So normally there's like a little island right there. You can still see some of the rocks sticking out of the water, but water's a lot, a lot higher than it normally is because normally all of this is like kind of wet. You know, you can walk through and get your toes a little wet, but you're not up to your knees over here. A lot less activity over here than it has been in like previous trips but i'm sure the farther we go down probably the more lively it'll start to look i end up pulling some gold out of our truck over here in a second there's so many little beds over here definitely not i don't think they would be bass beds probably bluegill beds i mean there's two right there it's crazy how per perfect of a circle they make too. Just gotta try these little spots right here because you just never know. Oh uh, yeah, there's a little, few little bass over in here. Oh, there's one. Oh, let it go, let it go. I don't know what that is. I didn't really get a good look at it. I don't know what it was. It might have been a super small bass, but something came out from underneath that log. That's the cool thing about doing this is like, you really have to cast everywhere because you just never know where a fish is going to be at. Like anywhere that I see. What I say is anywhere that there's like a shadow, deep spot, deep hole, whatever, you have got to get a cast because you just never know what's going to be underneath it. Oh, there was a good little bite. Bluegill. Oh, there's a little bass. Try to cast ahead of them. Nope, no interest. That was the first like, decent sized bass of the day though. There we go. There's one. Hey, for, oh no, first little fish was a little bass. I saw him when he came out and ate it. Look, I mean, we're casting in, what's that, probably foot and a half. Oh, he's back on it, back on it. Got him, got him, little one. <laughs> Let's go, little creek spotted bass. Alabama state fish, spotted bass. It's crazy that these fish are so small, but so aggressive, look at that. Kind of picking up where we left off with the micro fishing like look how like look at the overall length of them maybe what eight inch fish nine inch fish but just so thick so healthy just from living in this current having to swim fight for his food every day competing with who knows what to eat so they're a lot of fun especially they get bigger that's the cool thing about it like you can get up to two three four maybe even five pounds spotted bass in a little creek like this. I mean, the possibilities are endless of what you can catch in here. We're gonna get another little flip in there, see there's another one waiting. And then they're so aggressive. Like, I mean, I caught that fish 20 feet up in front of me. He swam over to it and ate it like he had an eight, and, which I know for sure that is not the case because the amount of bait that's in here is just ridiculousness. Ridiculousness. So I might need to switch over to the little super trooper because the super and super trooper and when the crawl falls it falls and flutters a little bit better than this one does and i've always fished that one i've always had you know maybe two or three bites by now but also that first little couple of sections that we fished through i really really didn't see too much life in there so i figure that's probably a lot of people's first stop when they come down here it's probably that little spot so Ooh, all this wood i really need something like weedless but yeah see we're home that little trick has saved me so many times Especially if you're in like a good spot sometimes if you hit the back of your rod and don't you know try to pop it out and if you don't bury your hook into whatever you're casting at you just give your rod a couple of light pops normally it'll pop out sometimes it doesn't always work but sometimes it'll save you a, from losing a pretty good fishing spot all right let's try this i came down the wrong side of this log oh already <laughs> i was trying to say my last sentence and finish it but we had a 
fish on. Oh my goodness, dude. This is so cool. Um, we should make a fish goal. Normally I try not to do this for videos because sometimes I'll set an unrealistic goal and we'll be like three fish in in an hour and I'm like, eh, this ain't gonna happen. Oh, there's so many little fish right here. So many of them. Um, let's say 10 fish. 10 fish is gonna be our goal for today on the little trooper. I mean, we literally have two baits with us and like we're pretty much gonna be throwing the same thing all day because that's the cool thing about these moving water fish is like you can get into so many different species and then they're all pretty much in the same little they're all doing the same thing looking for the same food so you really don't have to be too specific you know you don't have to go from spot to spot and have different lures ready to go probably gonna have to go around on this other side but we want to fish right here see if maybe we can get on a couple i definitely need to get some more practice in on doing this because i feel like i still move pretty loud and definitely can spook some fish if you aren't quiet and kind of subtle about it so it's definitely one thing i need to work on is like moving a little bit more quiet being a little bit more stealthy than what i currently am being and whenever i do this what i'm looking for is like moving water um and stuff that gets deep so like where i just walked through would have been a decent cast probably wouldn't be as hopeful as like a spot like this because i mean there's a whole bunch of bait you definitely want to be somewhere where there's bait i think these are a whole bunch of like little creek chubs as they call them um so hey there's a fish on that <laughs> hey look at that that's a pretty one look how dark that one is fish number two but as i was saying you want to look for bait see there was all those little creek chubs right there left that let that cross sit and pulling out a spotted bass Ouch. I'm looking for bait. I was just saying there's a whole bunch of creek chubs right here. We're going to throw them where they were all at. Maybe he'll find them some dinner. Oh, look, you see where he went? He went right up in that little cover right there. You would never know he was there. That was going to be my next point. Like all this little, all these little shade spots or like places where you don't think there'd be a fish because you can see there probably is one. Like there's probably about 10 of them in there. It's just, would you spook them or like just catching that first one might spook the other ones in there. But See, like that cast would be a good one too. I'd expect one on that one. Just anywhere you see a shadow, anywhere there's like an overhanging branch that you really can't see in the water, anywhere the water gets a little, that's not a fish, that is a snag. <laughs> anywhere the water gets a little bit deeper than normal, all places that you're gonna wanna start off and check out. And you might have to make, you know, 10, 15 casts at those different places and then maybe change up your bait a little bit luckily i feel like i found a pretty good bait but as the year goes on it might switch up a little bit like today i think i might need to throw like a different color i'm not sure what the crawls look like in here hopefully i'll catch one with like a crawl hanging out of his mouth that's what keyed me into the hot crawl color of the little trooper because i caught one probably first of april and i had a crawl hanging out of his mouth oh there we oh dude i saw you come up and eat it see i probably should have just pitched it right back in there i caught one earlier in april and it had a little crawl hanging out of his mouth and it looked exactly like this so yeah i had one another thing is if you see one come up and eat it or if you have a bite sometimes just casting it right back in there not fixing it on the hook just throwing it right back in there the fish is still going to be fired up looking for it so a lot of times they'll come back and get it no matter how it's rigged up all right we're gonna switch this one out for a super trooper just because i feel like we might get a few more bites on the one with a little bit more movement to it okay you see the difference in that one that one's crawls are a little bit different i'll hold them up side by side so y'all can see and normally i'm not like a super technical guy like this but i mean i've seen the difference in like you know being at eight fish by now versus being at two like just a little bit bigger presentation and then the crawls on the super trooper are gonna give you a little bit more action i think that action is probably what sets off a lot of the bites they don't like something just dancing in their face like that this one's cool super trooper's a good bait but or the just regular trooper is a good one but if i had the option to pick i'd definitely go with the super trooper just for that little bit of extra action and also our hook's been out a little bit hey might be a little bit too much Let's see We'll bend it out on a rock or something. Let's get this one rigged up. Oh yeah. 
See, that just looks good, how that dangles and everything. That's, I wouldn't be surprised if we cast in there and caught one first cast just because we got those. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, we got off. See? See, it falls totally different. All right, let's see if we can go back in there. That was a little bit better one. Should get eight quick this time if you're still in the area, still interested, if we didn't hook them too good. All right, and when I come to shallow water pools like this, like I like to say, I'm still learning, still a beginner in this, but I just like to make far casts because you know how it is whenever you're fishing. Like, there's a little bass right there. There we go. That's a good one. Hey, that's a little panfish, I think. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Oh, no, he went back in the water. I could probably grab him. He's literally right there. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but he was pretty. I need to order like a Alabama fish species book off of Amazon. There we go. Oh, there's another one. I think that was a little bass. Man, I should have brought my micro rod. I knew I was gonna end up saying that. There we go. Oh, that's like a little panfish hole right there. Oh, there we go. Hey, hey, that's a good one. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's a good fish, dude. Look at that. That's what happens when you just kind of stand in the spot. So this is like really good deep water right here. And we were kind of hanging out. One, I saw that snake and then two, one, I saw the snake. So I was trying to figure out if I wanted to keep going and turn around. <laughs> and then, hey, look at that. That is a really, really good one. That's number three. So I was trying to figure out if I want to turn around or keep going. Um. But also this is like a pretty deep spot and this is where me and john kind of stopped at and we really didn't catch too many more so i might fish this little spot a little bit i bet you this one bit just because i was sitting here kind of zoned out contemplating on what i wanted to do and he's actually still got a lot of energy left <laughs> dang this is a strong fish all right we're gonna walk him over here to a little bit shallower water <laughs> that is fun look at this one dude look at that Yeah, look at that little chunk. That's a good pounder or so. Would you look at that, guys? I went to pick up the slack in my reel and my line was in the middle of the creek. Dude, that is a heavy fish. I mean, that's probably about a pound and a half or out of this little bitty creek. See how deep my phone is in my pocket. It's like take a picture with them. Man, that was such a good fish, guys. That was probably one of the better fish that I've caught in a minute. Just as far as like thinking about where he came from. That one was probably the equivalent of like a four or five pounder in like a pond or a lake. Maybe a two, three pounder. We'll just go three pounder. We don't want to get too crazy. That last one we caught took our pincher. Switch this one out. There we go. Oh, I think you know he's on there. He's on there. He's on there. We got a little sunfish. Yes, sir. Fish number four. Little bluegill. Oh, sorry, dude. Up underneath the chin. Now, I think we hooked him through the mouth and then, like, no, underneath the chin. Just a good hook set. <laughs> uh, sorry, dude. See ya. Ooh. I feel like this little pool right here is going to be loaded with fish. Last time me and John came through here, I want to say we didn't catch anything. But there's definitely another one like we caught in the pool back behind us. And this one, we just got to probably sit here and shut up and get a few casts in and see if we can't catch one. I'm going to try to stay along like the sides of the pool. So like try to cast the either side to start. It's a good way to practice your casting angles. This is something I definitely tell you, like if you're not kind of used to fishing a little bit, or you know, you're not the greatest with your spinning rod or bait cast or whatever, I definitely recommend that you sit this one out and practice somewhere that you can. The good thing about this is like, as long as you're not casting your baits like really high up into the trees, you can still kind of get them back. But 
like in an area like this, it's not super hard to cast, but like if I was, you know, if I was a, trying to fly fish down here, I'm not a fly fisherman, so this is not a place where I'd want to, you know, try to learn how to fly fish. You'd be spending more money down here than you would, you know, trying out, trying to learn out on like a pond or a lake. Waders are good so far, still dry. I think that little bit of wetness that, oh, that was a good bite. I think the little bit of wetness we felt in the beginning was just kind of getting accustomed to having these on. All right, I got my phone in this like chest pocket and we are almost to it. Ooh, I'll tell you what, we are deep. I'm up on my tippy toes because this water is, water's no joke. I think it's shallow enough right here. It's gonna be fun to come back through. I feel like we might be in one of those stretches. There's a lot more bait and stuff back over here, but the water's kind of shallow for a bass just to be hanging out in. So this is a spot that I'll probably fish a little bit quicker just because I don't want to waste too much time over in here and really not be too much activity. But also then again, you never know. It's a little bit deeper right over here. I'm not sure how we're going to cross this section because I'm not walking with the water up to my shoulders. Look, there's a bass right there in front of us. Isn't there? Dude, we might be able to catch him, honestly, if I can get my little trooper in fast enough. I might swim over to it. Oh, he's looking at it. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. Eat it. Eat it. He's backing up. Dude, don't back up. Go towards it. Be a bass. There we go. Oh, good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good bass, probably. Dude, is he in a, Is he? Did he come off? Please don't tell me he came off. No, he's still on there. There he is. Oh, he came off. There's no way. Oh, he's in there. Dude, it's a blue looks on the piece of plastic. I was about to say. <laughs> that might be the craziest fish catch I've had all year. I was so hurt. Dude, look at the size of that blue out of this creek. I was so confused. I was hurt and confused at the same time. I mean, he got up and there was a piece of plastic and I was like, that plastic was fighting like a fish. Like y'all can see that on the camera. Oh my gosh, that's entertaining. <laughs> that deserves a like. Oh, that's a beautiful bluegill. Look at that. See ya. Dude, that was crazy. I was fighting that bluegill. He came all, like, he got wrapped in a tree over there, so I let my line go slack. Hopefully he would free himself, and which he did. And then I get him all the way over here and he stops fighting and I just see a piece of plastic coming back. So I thought he traded me for a piece of plastic. <sighs> Woo, that might be one of the craziest fish catches. I've had a couple crazy fish catches so far this year, like lost a fish, then like my crankbait fell in the water, caught another one. Like I've had a couple of cool things happen, but that would have been like the weirdest thing for sure. Like he came in like a costume. He was like, maybe if he sees this piece of plastic, I'll have time to get off or something. I don't know what he was thinking, but I mean, it was a pretty good disguise because he had me there for a second. I was like, there's no way this fish came off. Dude, that was crazy. All right, we're gonna try to hustle because it's starting to thunder a little bit, but it sounds like it's still pretty distant, but it's all possible. We'd like to not be in the creek with the fishing rod in our hand when it's thundering and lightning. Oh, that is a huge bass right there. Dude, that is a huge bass. Dude, if we can catch this fish, he is literally huge. Dude, that fish, that, that was a huge fish. That was a three, four pounder right there. Just cruising. Like literally swimming right beside me over here. Three or four pounder, easy, all day. If not bigger. Oh my gosh, no, this is the worst time. Worst possible place to get hung up. All right, we got to remember this spot. We got to make a mental note of that. Cause I mean, that fish was huge. He's probably, oh, he's right. He's literally right there. Let's see if we can maybe quietly get this. Okay, let's see. Maybe we can just drop down on top of him and catch him. Maybe, I highly, oh, that's not what we want to do. This fish is just hanging out right there. Oh, good catch, good catch. Oh, he's going underneath the log. Don't go under the log. That is such a big fish. Like, probably triple the size of the big one we just caught. He's not showing us any attention though, which I don't like. <sighs> not want to give up on a fish, but I mean, that one was like, I know you're right there. Ooh, that's the biggest fish I've seen in this creek so far. I mean, that was a solid three or four pounder, no doubt. Spotted bass too. That would have been a couple minute fight. I'm trying to wrestle him out of there first and then just a fight in general. Three hours later. 
I knew it. I knew there were big fish in here. I just never thought I would like see one before I caught it or see one and not be able to catch it because most of them in here, you don't see them until they like shoot out from underneath their little log or hole or wherever they're hiding at. And there we go. Hey, these little bluegill are so strong in here. <laughs> that's a little chump. Cool. All right, that's fish number six. I think could be seven. We're just going to go six. I need to carry him over to that fish's bed and see if he'll eat this. See you guy. The goal of 10. We're going to cap it off for that one that was on bed. I don't, I'm having mixed feelings about it. I start to kind of feel bad for standing. I was standing right over the top of it and like hitting it with the lure. I wasn't going to snag it, of course, but I started to feel a little bad because I mean, it just looked like it wanted me to leave. Like it stopped paying my lure any type of attention. I'm pretty sure we wrapped it up in our line that first time. So sometimes I feel like you just kind of got to respect the fish, you know, if they're really showing you like, hey, just leave me alone, please. I'm not in the mood. Like I know what you're trying to do. I'm like, All right, dude, you win. <laughs> Oh, guys, I can't stop thinking about that one fish. I feel like we could probably catch our next four right in here. Standing up on this rock was a good idea at the time, but now I'm not sure. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to put a hole in these sliding on this rock. There we go. Good one. That's a good one. I think it's a bass too. Come on. Yes, sir. Number seven. Oh, yeah. Good one. Hey, there we go. We're just going to take you on up here. <laughs> Look at that little spot. It's not a bad one. You gotta stay with it. Stay with it. Just keep fishing. The cool thing about this is you never know. Some of these fish might have never even seen a lure a day in their life before. And the way they eat it, you would think they wouldn't have. Look how all the fish have literally looked the exact same. Just like huge shoulders. Just big fish in general. Relatively speaking, because we are in a creek. All right, see you later, dude. Man, that was cool. So there's so many more fish over here too like that one was big but the other one was three times that size i promise y'all like if y'all saw that i hope there's a frame because we're still over there for 30 or 40 minutes so there should be one clip where you can see it like he was easily double the size of that might even be triple one bad thing about making these long casts like that is sometimes you'll spook other fish that might be in the area because they see their friend getting drugged they see their friend, that's a bass being drove through the water by his, oh, there was a, that's a bluegill. Oh. Hey, we got seven fish though. We got seven, almost made it to our goal. There we go. Oh, little bass, hey, here's number eight. <laughs> he was on there. Oh, there he goes. We're gonna count him. We saw him, we got him up. We were able to get him, identify him, and we were within a foot of him. I think that's going to be our new rule. We're going to start catching the fish or allowing the catch. If you get within a foot of them, you know, you get them successfully up out of the water, you counts. Need two more, two more. Then we're going to fish our way back and hopefully we can catch 10 more on the way back. <laughs> oh, there's another little bite. Oh, that was a good one. Hey, another big bluegill. <laughs> Let's go. Ooh, through the eye. I'm sorry, dude. It's just always good to see like a body of water like this. It's just super lively and has a whole bunch of different fish in it, a whole bunch of good sizey fish. You know, even when the bluegill and panfish are big, that's always a good sign. Especially, or like when the panfish and like the dink bass are still thick and healthy, it's always a good sign because it just has so much potential. Like you could easily slip up on probably a five, six pound spot in this creek and it wouldn't surprise me at all. Especially this time of year, if that one's still in bed. So when we were fishing, it might've been kind of, I guess, quote unquote, pre-spawn in here so that's probably why it was so good a few times we came in here oh there we go there's a bite i don't think he's on there Maybe he's not. Ooh, good bite that was a hammer there we go what's that little bluegill ha <laughs> ha let's go dude all of the blue that one like choked across all of them that we have caught have been big that is crazy to me. Like he actually got it in his mouth. 
Most of the time when you hook bluegills on Ned Rigs, they don't eat it like this. Normally it's just kind of, you know, hanging off the side of them. You can uh, hook them fairly easy. Good chill. Awesome. Another bluegill. It's probably fish number 10. It's so hard to keep track of how many you've caught when you just keep catching them. <laughs> when you're this good. All right, we're gonna get a little cast in here. I think that was number 10, but also I feel like it could have been number nine. Even though we just caught the number before, three minutes ago, I just keep getting bites, keep getting. All right, we're gonna say that's number nine. Oh, there we go. Another sunfish. Oh yes, this is perfect number 10. Um, so I have a painting of one of these, MB painted for me. Um, I'll have to show y'all MB. Actually, she'll be in an upcoming video over the summer, so stay tuned. But she painted one of these, and these things are so pretty. Look how beautiful that fish is. This is a perfect number 10 to end the video off on. Y'all drop me the name in the comments. Like, that thing is absolutely beautiful. Like, I would love to have a fish tank just full of those. Especially imagine those, like, a little black light. Mm, chef's kiss. Oh, there we go. There's a little something. I don't know what it is. It's small, whatever it is. Oh, a little sunfish. Oh, it's like the one we just caught. Hey, let's get you back in. See you, sir. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn around on that one. Haven't really been seeing too, too much activity. But we're gonna get one more cast, of course, and then we're gonna turn around. You know how it goes. Oh, there was there. He, oh, yeah, got him. What is that? Oh, a little bluegill. Hey, we'll take it. All right, we pretty much made it. Hey, oh my gosh, what is that? No, that's a thing. I'm hung up. Dang it. <laughs> there we go. It's a little bass. Don't go over there. Come here. <laughs> Dude, these things fight so hard, and then I'm pulling them upstream too. Man, this is so much fun. Hey, chill, 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 chill. Awesome. Check that out. Little Alabama spotted bass. See ya. Cool, cool, cool. All right. That was a pretty successful wading trip for the first one. It's not over yet. We still have about 100 yards to fish or so. I'm still catching them on the way back. But I'd say that's definitely successful. I'm like, I'm only 22 years old, first of all. Then second, I didn't really, I grew up fishing, but like YouTube style of fishing that I'm doing now, I never really did. I grew up more like catfish, crappie, brim fishing, you know, sitting on the bank. Um, and then my dad, I remember my dad always used to tell me like, tell you, you're more like a bass fisherman just because I would never, you know, I'd real, cast my worm out, bluegill fishing like a live worm, let it sit for, you know, 30, 40 seconds. And then I just reel it back in, cast it, reel it back in, cast it, reel it back in. And I think that's probably why I like fishing so much because I can move around, I can change my bait. There's just so much to do with fishing. And then you also have the times where you can just sit and chill and be patient and whatnot. But yeah, I say all that to say like walking through a creek fishing like this, never in a million years so like this is all this stuff is still new to me and i'm truly learning like i know how to catch fish and i feel like once you understand like the cadence and everything of the species that you're trying to target like the cadence that you need to be casting your lure at them with or you know what to look for when you're fishing for a specific species it's really not that hard it's just kind of getting used to the environment and everything but i feel like i'm doing pretty good as of right now um definitely have learned a lot in these past couple of years of you know, being on kayaks and fishing creeks on kayaks and then also being able to wade my first creek today. Also, if you want to try this, I wouldn't recommend like just pulling up on any creek and just, you know, hopping out and starting to walk through it. I'd make it one that you kind of know a little bit. Like I know this creek, at least the stretch, the stretch we waded today, I had never went that far, but like I know for the most part, the creek isn't ha doesn't have any like huge drop offs. So I'm not gonna step in a hole and it's gonna be a hundred foot deep, you know? So just make sure you're safe with it. Um, definitely something you shouldn't do alone, but I mean, it's something that you can still, you know, it's not, I wouldn't say it's as dangerous as like being on a kayak in like a big river, being alone and still kind of close to civilization. Unless I were to get eaten by a bear down here, then that 
probably just my time to go then. <laughs> we're gonna come back for that fish that was on bed over there. We're gonna come back for it. I don't know if it's gonna eat. I kind of felt bad. I felt like I was tempting it to do something it didn't want to do. Like it just, it was looking at me in the eyes and it was like, just please stop. Like it was just looking like, like I see you right there. Like, I don't know what you're trying to accomplish, but it didn't want it, whatever. Whatever, whatever. It is what it is. That was quite interesting to say the least. I really, really enjoyed that, guys. A uh, couple tips for you. If you wanna come do this, one, if you don't know the area, I highly suggest bringing a friend. I feel like I should say that, so none of y'all like, oh, let's go fish a creek. And like, I'm not, I'm. this is honestly my first time doing it and like nothing crazy happened, but I mean, you are outdoors, you are in nature, you never know. There could be a bear, there could be a coyote, there could be a snake or whatever that might get you. So. Uh, that'd probably be priority number one is like just let somebody know where you're going So if they don't hear from you in the next like few hours or whatever say I'll text you at four You know just safety first safety first you got to be got to be semi safe sometimes because I want to have all of y'all around Because I want to meet all of y'all one day So like it'd be nice if y'all would just stay around so I can meet you one day um, <laughs> And then live after that too. Another tip for you get you some little troopers or just get you a little Ned bait the micro fishing and micro fishing combo would probably be perfect out here and you can just catch anything I really like the Ned rig because it seems like you catch like that next size up a pan fish. You don't have to sort through like all the, you know, little small creek chub and stuff like that. You're not gonna be catching those little things. So um, that's pretty much it. I guess this is the second in outro. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This creek is awesome. We're probably gonna have a couple more summer days out here. Gonna try not to milk y'all with it. We're gonna switch it up and try some new creeks and kind of explore. Might do a little Google Maps video here coming up soon. I know I've driven over a whole bunch of creeks, but I need to start mapping them or marking them whenever I find them. But I'm going to shut up talking. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to fish them hard and have a good day on the creek, baby. <laughs>